Okay, so let's get right, in, right back sure. into um, the day you heard about this when sure. you were going into commercial break, that whole setup. Yeah, um, I was live on the air when the governor's first tweet went out basically announcing that this had happened. Uh, and at first, we didn't really know what that meant. Uh, I was on the set, I was anchoring, as I said, and so I immediately sent a note to our assignment editor and said, you know, check into this, let's see what this is, and finished anchoring the rest of that segment of the newscast during the commercial break, came out, checked in, we'd gotten a little more information, we'd confirmed that yes, this came from the governor's office and it is a do not use order. Uh, which is different than a boil water advisory, which is, I think, what a lot of people maybe wondered at first. You know, is this just a boil water advisory? We get those all the time. And it quickly became clear this was not a boil water advisory. This was something much more serious. Right. Well, the, what the chemical spill taught us is, is that water is extremely valuable, and we just often take it for granted because we have so much of it. Uh, you know, if you go out west, they have droughts on a regular enough basis that they, uh, they understand the value of their water. It was pointed out to me um, by a visiting scientist, uh, and he has spent a lot of time out west and here back east, and he's like, the one thing that you notice when you go out west is that every hotel, every place you go to has fountains, has water fountains, and when you come east, nobody does. And the reason out west is is that they want to show you that they have water and they have water in abundance it's a it's a very deep psychological thing what happens here where we get a lot of rainfall we take water for granted we're rarely under water stress in terms of, of water quantity stress um, we just have so much water and that water has a dilution value to it so it, it dilutes our pollution and but what we saw from that chemical spill is that when we don't have water, it creates a serious, serious situation and not one that's just, oh, environmentalists care about it. Everybody cares about it. Citizens care about it. Businesses care about it. It's wildly important to us. And we see it when we're, we, we realize it when it's gone or when it's not available to us. That was the first thing that the chemical spill told us is just how valuable it is. Um, the second thing it taught us is that we have to be protective of that water. I mean, we, we have to be protective of that water because so many, so much of our state, so much of, of our businesses, our economy depends on it. It is not just people who care about the environment. They care about the environment because of its value to the people that live here. So we have to be protective of it. And that doesn't mean saying nothing can happen around water, because again, there's so much water that's not, not even close to possible. But we do have to be vigilant um, when it comes to being protective of it. What we're doing is uh, making something that could be an early warning system, right? So um, the, the EPA and local governments can't monitor every stretch of every body of water the whole time, right? Um, but a whole bunch of citizens with pretty cheap sensors and Gatorade bottles could, right? Um, at this point, it's really just about detecting is something different? Is something weird? Is the water unusually warm? Is it unusually conductive? And then it would be time to come in with test tubes and vials of water and go test it, find out, get the experts in and find out. But it could be the kind of thing where the experts aren't necessarily looking at a stretch of, uh, of the river, and, but somebody is worried about it. And they can say, look, you know, every night at midnight, the conductivity spikes. Could you all check this out? At least come and take a look. And that's where I think things can start to get interesting, where the resources of the government or, or, or industry even can be like, oh, let's, sure, yeah, we'll go figure that out. And citizens can put that power in their hands.